right, so uh, we have to introduce our sponsor. We're going to talk about two the other stuff to work for the rest of the hour. Okay, uh, so firstly, I'd like to thank the organizers. It's always a pleasure to come to Moscow. Uh, I'd like to say this is really a homological mirror, well, this is really a mirror symmetry talk. It doesn't have an awful lot to do with uh, Hicks theory in general, but there is some relation. I'm sort of thankful that Helm got moved to this morning, because there is some relation between this talk and Helm's talk, especially if you get towards the end of it. But yeah, there's. I don't have much to say about Higgs theory, so I'm sort of going to, rather than trying to come with some tenuous connection, I'm just going to skirt around the whole issue. But hopefully some people will find this interesting. Okay, so I'm going to talk about pseudo-lattices. I haven't told you what a pseudo-lattice is. I'll begin by doing that. So, pseudo-lattice. is a finitely generated free abelian group uh, let's call it G I'm trying to keep my hand writing decent for at least the, five, the first five minutes uh, equipped with a non-degenerate bilinear form which I'm going to denote by angle brackets, mapping from G cross G to Z. Okay, what's the real difference between this and just a lattice in the normal sense? The real difference is we don't assume anything about the, uh, the bilinear form being symmetric. We allow the bilinear form to be sort of completely arbitrary if we want it to. Uh, I've got the wrong set of notes here. So here is a sort of classical example, which is where the mirror symmetry is going to come in. Uh, if I've got x a smooth uh, complex variety, do I need, no, I should probably say projective. And I'm going to let blackboard bold d of x be the derived category of coherent sheaves, found the derived category of coherent sheaves on x. Then what I can do is I can consider uh, the numerical Rothendieck group uh, of that derived category along with its Euler form. Uh, the Euler form, which is defined by chi of a pair of sheaves F1, F2, is the sum of minus 1 to the power of i over i of the dimension of the homomorphisms from f1 to f2 twisted by i. Okay, so this structure makes the numerical growth and deep group into a pseudo lattice. The fact that we want the numerical growth and deep group rather than the usual growth and deep groups, we want this thing to be non degenerate. The numerical growth and deep group is just sort of quotient out by the kernel. particularly pertinent to what I'm going to say. Uh, so, special case, I'm going to say the elliptic curve, this is E, this is the pseudo lattice Z squared, uh, with the form uh, 0, 1, Minus one here somewhere. Uh, I think it's this one, right? Let's say in basis. I've got some basis AB where the form is this. This arises from an elliptic curve in two different ways. And this is sort of the fundamental observation. So, firstly, this is the numerical growth and deep group associated to the value derived category of coherent sheaves. Uh, for C in an elliptic curve. What are A and B? A is just the class of the structure sheet for a point. B is just the class of the structure sheet of the whole elliptic curve C. 
But I can also get E in a different way. Uh, e is also the first integral cohomology of the curve C with the usual intersection form. Now the basic idea of the whole, I mean sort of, you know, the fundamental thing underlying a lot of this is that actually at least two pictures of mirror. You can think of this as being the numerical growth and degree associated to the Fukayasidal category of C. Uh, and so mirror symmetry tells us that the down derived category coherent sheets and the Fukayasidal category uh, sort of equivalent to each other in things of mirror. Elliptic curves are in some sense self-mirror, so these two things are really the fact these two things are the same is really a mirror symmetric state. Okay. Now what do I want to do with this? I'm not sort of interested in studying elliptic curves, I'm more interested in studying surfaces. So what I want to do is I want to I want to come up with a pseudomatic version of uh, a, a surface containing an anti-canonical divisor. So the following definition, I should say actually that a lot of this, I haven't really given any references. So the definition of pseudo lattice is first written down by, in this form, by Kuznetsov, but it's based on the work by a sort of huge list of earlier people, going all the way back to, I think, maybe Bondel and Ordov in the 90s. Uh, yeah, so this is... And the following definition is really sort of effectively, I mean, the, 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 the uh, categorical definition here is really due to Anna and Olvinenko, but again, based on a lot of earlier work, this definition is just a pseudo-lattice statement of it, so let's let G and H be pseudo-lattices. <coughs> uh, I'm going to say a spherical homomorphism Spell homomorphism F from G to H is a homomorphism of abelian groups. Such that the following two conditions hold. Firstly, F has a right adjoint. maps H back to G, which has the following property. If I take the product of F of U with V in H, that's the same as taking the product of U with R of V in G. This is for U in G, V in H. And secondly, uh, the twist and co twist, we should define as follows. things, 
and often in certain situations, well, you're going to have some intercooling devices where they glue together, and in certain situations these will be smooth. Uh, then I can define the pullback. Move right around. Yeah, cable. C, uh, this is spherical. Here, I is the inclusion from C to X. Uh, okay. So this is the classic example. Okay. So. At this point, I'm going to wave my hand slightly because I don't want to spend half an hour giving you a huge list of definitions that is not really enlightening. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say a spherical homomorphism, just so I can get onto some more interesting stuff. F from G to E. So G is just some pseudo lattice, E is the elliptic curve pseudo lattice. I'm going to call this quasi del pezzo. If it is the main bit, as the properties of one of these maps from the numerical growth of the group of X. To a numeric growth of the group of C, where uh, C sitting inside X is a smooth anti canonical curve in a smooth rational surface. Just 
just decreased by O of C from D of X. Or maybe O of minus C. Yeah, I, well, I'd have to I'd have to sit down and work it out. Let's do it, let's tap it in here. This is anyway, this is this is a version of anti coin in some sense. This this condition is called relatively flat here. Okay. I've done the calculation, but I don't trust myself to be able to do it before. Okay, so I'm gonna do I'm gonna make another example. So let, let V be some vector in the elliptic curve lattice. I know that it's the case that if I take the inner product of V with itself, that gives me zero. I'm going to define a pseudo lattice, Z of V, along with a spherical homomorphism to E, as follows. Uh, Z of V is just the integers generate a, it's just isomorphic to the integers, it's generated by a single element. Z, this element Z has, if I apply zeta to it, it just gives me V, and it has, uh, if I take the product of Z with itself, that just gives me 1. Okay. This has the two important properties. Firstly, the co twist is the identity on Z, and the twist is just the day twist along V. This lattice is going to show up significantly in what follows. So it's uh, Z, yeah? And T, Z. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, this should be a yeah, Z. Yeah. Ui 
dy fj of dj taken in h if i is 1 and j is 2 and it's 0 if i is 2 and j is 1. So if they're in the same one, I just take their products in the normal way. If the first one's in G1 and the second one's in G2, I push both of them down to H and then take their product down there. And if the first one's in G2 and the second one's in G1, then I, the product is just defined to zero. It seems like a slightly strange thing to do, but it works. by the following small proposition. Now, we have 
ample this when we're talking about del Petto surfaces. In this case, we're not assuming ample, and on the mirror side, that corresponds to rather than taking a vibration over the whole of the complex numbers, you have to shrink your base to be just a disk. So let's let delta be a closed unit disk in C. I'm going to let pi from y to delta be a surjective map. From a smooth, there's some more assumptions here by pushing under the carpet, I need compact and oriented, uh, all manifold y to delta. I want the smooth fibers.
This is actually just a product of day twists and up to an equivalence relation which corresponds to really a choice of paths, also choice of basis in here, but mostly choice of paths. Uh, the monetary factorization determines the vibration up to diffie morphism. This is an old result of Moisheson. I think this thing can be pushed to symplectomorphism, but you need to be a little bit more careful about your assumptions. So I'm only going to say diffie morphism for now. So this is an old result of Moisheson. Now, I've got H1 of C, this is my elliptic curve skew lattice. The question is, can I, can I build a bigger skew lattice? The answer is yes, I can. So each path, each path in here corresponds to a vanishing cycle in H1 of Q, which is the vanishing cycle along the path. If I parallel transport the vanishing cycles along the path, then I get uh, vanishing cycles along gamma i. These correspond to thimbles, which I can think of as elements of the second relative cohomology, second relative homology of y with respect to the fiber c on the back. So I have a set of thimbles. Uh, I should say it's a result, I mean, I've seen it proved by uh, Grassi, Halverson, and Sheamuson, but I'm sure it's older than that. Uh, Thimbles form a basis for this thing. So I've got a basis of thimbles, and I can define a pairing on this as well. How do I define this? I define this as u1, and then I take the push forward, let's say by pi, push forward, u2. I just introduced open notation, not told you what it means. So this, this is the topological intersection form. lower pi, this is a diffio of y, that fixes all the points pi, but it rotates the boundary by half a turn. So this takes the topological intersection pairing, which is fundamentally symmetric, and turns it into something anti or something not symmetric. And in doing so, that gives me my. So it doesn't fix Q, right? It doesn't necessarily fix Q, but I think it only matters because it's only uh, this is only topological. So I've just got a thimble, which I think of being as a class with a boundary, and I just take it and I just twist it round so it goes the other way, and then all the intersection points are in the middle. So I just to account. Somehow related to if you take like the, the 
you just, if you have a singularity, you look at sort of the bounding ball and then you do a similar picture and it gives you an intersection pairing and that becomes an invariant of the singularity itself. Uh, this makes this into a pseudo lattice. I have an actual map just coming from the long exact sequence of a pair, <coughs> mapping from here to here. This map is spherical. And the total monodromy is just a twist. So I want to know, I mean, this thing is starting to look increasingly like a quasi-del Petzo homomorphism. In order for it to be a quasi-del Petzo homomorphism, I want it to be mirror to my quasi-del Petzo vibration, you know, my, uh, my rational surface with an anti-conical curve. But if I'm defining a lambda gizmo model, then I've got an additional assumption. The additional assumption I have under the lambda gizmo model is I want to know what the fiber is over infinity. So I'm going to have to add some kind of extra assumption on here which corresponds to a fiber in infinity, but the whole thing's only over a disk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify a form for the total monodromy. I'm going to say this, the form for the total monodromy is going to look like the monodromy around the fiber I would expect to be in infinity. So if we further impose that the total monodromy has the following form, 1, n minus 12, 0, 1, for n is the number of singular fibers. Then phi is positive or better. So, we will be doing more than the 12 points in this class. Peter, but I think 12 points is positive or better. Yeah, I mean, as long as all of those 12 points are just moving it to curve, that's fine. But you can, you, all you need is a smooth anti conical divisor, so you can blow up as many times as you like as long as your anti conical divisor makes it. Nine points in general. Uh, no, I think you only need, you can only do eight points in general position, right? Because the ninth point has to lay on... No, oh, no, no, nine is fine, nine is fine, yeah, nine points in general position is fine.
These first bit, this first bit is the factorization of G3, which is just something you can kind of, you know what, it seems well known. And then 1, 1, 0, 1, the power of n minus 3. This is for n greater than or equal to 3, any number of fibers. Alternatively, you can have uh, 1, 0, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 4, minus 1, 3, minus 1, 4, minus 1, 3, minus 3, 16, minus 1, 5. This one only works for n equals 4. So, sort of variants and partial versions of this result appeared in various places. For instance, I think in 2015 or 16, Denis Oru proved that there are two topological distinct ones for n equals 4. Uh, various people have done sort of various subsets of this, but as far as we know, the full version of this has never appeared. So. Okay. Okay, do I want to. Maybe I do want to say it. So as a corollary, we get a sort of shadow of homological mirror symmetry. It's not full homological mirror symmetry, it's only working on numerical protein deep groups, but it's certainly some kind of shadow. Is it like knowledge of mirror symmetry, but for the vectors? To an extent, and I'm getting to that. Uh, Let's let x be smooth and rational. I mapping c into x is a smooth anti divisor With c squared equals d, then I'm going to say there exists a vibration pi from y over the closed disk with 12 minus d singular fibers. And total monotropy as follows. Uh, 1 minus d, 0, 1. So n minus 12 is minus d, where d is the square of this. Uh, and distinguished fiber c, I should probably call it something else. Let's say C check, such that the following diagram Statement lying above this. 
is just sort of a shadow on you both both of these. Okay, so in my last 15 minutes, I want to change tack a little bit and go over to something related to what Elvis said earlier. So I want to talk about the generations. So Luke Mill led me into this quite nicely by saying, is this some sort of relative version of Dolgachev mirror symmetry for K3 surfaces? And the idea is that it does seem to be something like that. And we haven't worked out all the details yet, but I can give you a partial picture. And there seems to be a close relationship between the two. So let's talk about the generations. So let's suppose I've got V. V is a K3. I'm going to degenerate V through a type 2 degeneration, and I'm going to degenerate V to a union of two surfaces glued along a device of D. So what are these things? Xi irrational. D is a smooth elliptic anti-canonical curve. Okay, so I'm just taking my K3, I'm sort of pushing it out to the boundary, and at some point it breaks into two pieces. Those two pieces are glued along an anti conical curve. Associated to such a degeneration in the K3 lattice, uh, associated to V, I have a sublattice I. So I is a rank 2 isotropic sublattice. which is associated to the type 2 degeneration. This sort of comes out of failing for other classifications. <coughs> so that's my basic setup. Of the natural map from G to E. 
So this comes equipped with an actual map to E. I'm going to let K be the kernel of that map. We think of that as being being able to glue classes together to give sort of a class on the full picture. K is saying the restriction of each of these things to E, to E is the same. So this is corresponding to the fact that we're gluing X1 and X2. Interestingly, K is a lattice. So this is no longer a pseudo lattice. If you do this, then even though both of these things are very, the, the forms on both of these things are very non-symmetric, when you move them this way and take the kernel, you get symmetry back.
Now, I want to relate this through the same kind of picture to these vibrations over discs. There's an obvious kind of way of doing this. What I can do is I can take my face P1, which I think of as a sphere, I can cut it in half sort of along the equator, and I can split my vibrational W up into two vibrations, Y1 and Y2, which live over the top and the bottom. Taking the mirror of this, I can mirror the cohomology of W. That works perfectly fine. I can mirror the cohomology. I can go through the process I just discussed on the cohomologies on Y. I can get a full, I can get a, a sequence exactly like this one out if I want to. So, uh, uh, do I want to do that? No, I probably don't have time. I can get a full, uh, a sequence exactly like this one out, but the question is, I mean, it's sort of clear where the intersections come from, but this has got a lot more structure in it, right? I mean, this thing has got a mixed host structure, it's got all sorts of interesting things. You know, the, if you write down the same picture on the other side, it's not entirely clear. I mean, the same structure should exist. But it's not entirely clear what the, uh, to me at least, like, you know, you get a mixed host structure in each of these pieces, you get an exact sequence of mixed host structures, what are those mixed host structures? How do they come about geometrically from this picture, right? Sort of on, on the Clement Schmidt sequence, you have a description for each term, like here is where the mixed hole structure comes from. In this picture, in this picture, I don't see it in quite the same way, but we can just mirror each of these terms and the sequence continues to hold. Imagine the sequence you get out is basically just um, it's effectively just Mayer Vitoris. For this short part, you get like you know Mayer Vitoris for yeah, for the gluing of these to give back. But it isn't clear to me what these mixed hole structures are and where they're coming from. So that, I'll sort of end on a question and see if anyone can tell me anything inside. Okay, thank you very much. Other question? Uh, and can you do something similar for different types of degenerations? Uh, the hope is yes. At the moment, no. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, the hope is that this could all be pushed a lot further. So the, the, the sort of the, the long-term idea of the program is to understand, like, okay, you know, maybe we can figure out an entire picture for... I mean, you know, there's, there's something suggestive going on here, and this is all very speculative, but, you know, we have a Clemens Schmidt exact sequence. Anytime you have a degeneration, you have a Clemens Schmidt exact sequence. That's giving you a lot of information about, you know, how the cohomology is breaking up, how the mixed host structures work. If there's more generally an actual mirror to the Clement Schmidt sequence, then we might be able to say, well, okay, you know, we have one picture on one side that's telling us as we degenerate the cohomology breaks up in this way, we can go to the other side and maybe that's saying, okay, we can break our mirror up into some sort of pieces that look like that, and these are the models which will all be glued together. Uh, so, I mean, that's. So, to answer a question, like the case of more dimensional cubic, some degeneration of that, but. Each of them you have a virtual vanishing site has a mixed structure. You can glue them together 
then you get some ballooning in the sequences that you have on each of them. So on each of them you have um, a similar exact sequence. And now the, the nearby files get blue. Yep. And that's how you yeah, so maybe we should discuss this afterwards because I'd be interested to know more detail about it. I, 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 don't, I don't know anywhere near as much on theory as you do, so you can probably uh, educate me. Just on this chat. Another question. If not, let's take our game.